Imagine a game where you're mining for resources in a deep, dark, danger-filled cave. And then you have to make strategic decisions of which of the upgrades you want to spend your hard-earned resources on. Now mash that with the fast-paced, deadly combat of a game like Nuclear Throne, where if you die, you start all over. One wrong move and it's all gone. That's the roguelike I want to build, where every run is a desperate gamble for resources and survival. And when you die, you've got no one else but yourself to blame. There's just one little problem, one microscopic little detail. This is what I'm starting with. I'm AJ and I make fast roguelikes. This is devlog 1 of my massive and probably foolish journey of making my dream roguelike come to life. I'm documenting everything. The wins, the bugs, the scrap features, the whole journey. Let's see if I can actually pull this off. So that's the grand vision, but to get there we're starting off with what's known as programmer art. It's just simple squares and simple shapes with different colors to know what's what. And no character models, no fancy environments, just shapes, and this is completely on purpose. It's so easy, especially when you're working alone, to get lost trying to make things look more pretty from day one. You can waste weeks modeling characters and drawing sprites before you've written even a single line of code. By using these basic shapes, I'm forcing myself to focus on one thing that truly matters in a game like this. The game feel. Does moving around feel responsive? Is attacking satisfying? And are the enemies fun to fight? My theory is simple, if I can make a square feel good to control, I'm on the right track to making a darn good game. The pretty graphics can wait, this is all about building a solid foundation for making a fun game. First things first, I created a basic player controller. A few quick adjustments to acceleration and it felt snappy enough to get started. I then added some basic terrain from a previous project and some 2D lighting and shadows. Now the player could move around and I guess run into the walls, but they needed to do more than that. They needed a reason to exist. It was time to give the square a melee attack. Designing attacks just right can be a challenge, especially if you want to make your game actually good and feel good. There's a lot of tweaking to do with the timings, the offsets and the hitboxes. My first attempt was as basic as it gets. Click the mouse and a hitbox appears. It's really hard to judge if the attacks feel good without any kind of feedback. So next I added some basic effects to the attack. I added this kind of swoosh effect and a little dash to the player when he's using the attack. I tweaked the size and the offset of the attack hitbox until it felt like it was a reasonable attack. Now that the player can attack, they need something to hit. Since the game is about mining, I need the cave walls to be destructible. The first step was just to make sure I could make the correct wall disappear at the click of the mouse. The second step was still very basic. You hit a block with the new attack and it disappears. It worked, but it didn't really feel like you were smashing a wall. It felt a little hollow and there was no impact and no satisfaction. To make it feel better, I added some juice. Now when a block is destroyed, it shatters into smaller pieces that fly outwards. I also added a subtle screen shake. And it's a tiny change, but smashing through a wall now feels chunky and satisfying. It's all about making the destruction a core part of the game and really satisfying, and not just some gimmick or a kind of side thought. It's gonna be what the player is doing on every level throughout the game, so this f needs to be really nice to do on its own. And after a couple of hours of tweaking the particles and the attacks, I led in on something that just, just felt good. Our heroic blue square could move, attack, and level the whole world, but it was all alone. It needed a nemesis. It was time to create the very first monster, a creature born from code and simple shapes, a relentless mindless hunter composed of two simple brown squares, destined to be the first of many. Enter the rat. My goal was to create an enemy that felt fun to fight against. For this I implemented behavior trees, 
This lets me visually script the enemy logic, like spot the player, move closer, attack when in range. I imported from a older project and then improved upon a 3 debugger that helps me see exactly what the AI is thinking. The rat's behavior is super simple, it picks a direction with no walls in the way and moves in a straight line. If a player is nearby, it bites at random intervals. And with some luck it may even hit the player. It's a super simple enemy and very easy to defeat. But after playtesting I noticed that it's still relatively easy to get hit by one or two when clearing a room. And especially when they are, there's many of them and once we add more enemies then they can really sneak up on you and get some hits. But the lone hunter, the rat, is not enough. I created a second enemy. I created a lantern carrying zombie, also made from two squares, the body and the lantern, but now it has a ranged attack. It throws this burning pile of lantern oil at the player. Its behavior is a bit more interesting, it tries to keep its distance from the player and fires these projectiles from its lantern. My whole plan is to keep the enemy simple and create a challenge from the emergent gameplay. The chaos that happens when you're dodging projectiles or carving new paths through the destructible walls. Now finally I had something to actually play, something that is starting to look like a game. I hit play, smashed through a wall to get the drop on the rat and poof, there it goes. Dodged a projectile from the zombie and smashed it into oblivion. You have no idea how satisfying that moment was, like two weeks of work and now I can finally have a single interaction of moving, attacking, destroying and dodging and it's actually all working, the core gameplay loop, the foundation of everything. It's ugly, it's basic, it's a little buggy sometimes, you know sometimes the rats get a little stuck in the walls, but it's a game and it's only getting better from here. In our first devlog and in the first two weeks of development, we created a playable, if very simple, prototype. We established our core vision for the game. A game that blends the looting and the resource collection and management with fast-paced, frantic melee action. We created a responsive player controller with basic melee attacks and two enemies to fight in the world, powered by the behavior trees. Now this is just the beginning and there's a mountain of work ahead. Next up I want to create the first version of our procedural generation system. It will use a combination of procedural generated natural looking caves and handcrafted rooms to create these natural caves with very uh, decisively chosen gameplay elements. The system will create these natural looking caves that will get the most out of our destructible terrain while also giving me the levers and the control over the gameplay, making sure each level feels fun. I think it's also time to create the player and the enemies a new visual look, and also implement a couple new interesting enemies for the game. So if you want to see how the procedural generation turns out and what the kind of visual look of the game will be, make sure to subscribe so you can see it in the next video when it comes out. Now if you have some cool ideas for the game, like what you want to see from the enemies and the weapons and mechanics, make sure to drop that in the comments below. And if you wanna make games with me, you can join my community down in the description. I'll catch you in the next one.